I wish I knew how to quit you. Then why don't you? <laughs> Maybe I get canceled for that introduction. Anyways, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Rec Talk. And um, I got a lot of comments on the last video. Uh, a lot of a lot of comments from Florida State and Clemson fans, which I love to see. I generally um, talk about Georgia Tech football, but we're in the off season, and this is the most tumultuous time in college football. Look, college football is never going back to the way it was, and we can't be resigned to to self pity over that. It is what it is. Um, but a lot of Florida State and Clemson fans were like, "Hey, thanks, appreciate um, you kind of be, having a fair." Um, somewhat un unbiased opinion look being angry at clemson and florida state is useless like it's not productive what's going to happen is going to happen like i said in the last video if um if the lawsuits go the acc's way you're just postponing the destruction of this conference so another comment i got was um, from a tech fan hey what what does this mean for georgia tech and I really want this video to be, what does this mean for all of the teams in the ACC? So we're going to look at um, each team or most of them. Um, what is your attendance like? Uh, like, what is your home game attendance? That's going to kind of tell us and lead us into your market value. So how well attended are your games? How well viewed are your games? Um you know, what's your viewership like? What is it? How does that stack up nationally? Um, then we're going to look at financials. What is your um, athletic revenue? What is your athletic debt and your athletic margin? Those three things together should give you a good picture of uh, kind of financial health. So those are going to be the, the top two things, really, that these conferences are going to look at. I've talked about on this channel, you know, I think a lot of tech fans and probably similar with like, um, maybe the Boston colleges and wakes, um, Syracuse of the world. Hey, you know, we got a lot to offer these conferences. Why wouldn't they want us? And I can only speak for tech fans. A lot of tech fans I'm hearing just kind of assume, oh, the big 10 makes all the sense in the world for us. Well, when you look at, you know, your financial health, your viewership, those are the two things. Um, the top two things they're going to look at. Third, really more for the Big Ten is your academics, but you got to have, you got to hit at least a certain bar with those first two, you know, is what it is. Uh, finally, we'll look at um, academics, and then I'll put in like who are my first teams in to what we're now calling the Power Two, which is the SEC and the Big Ten. Um, then I'll go like next in, like who's more likely to make the Big 12. And then, you know, who do I think might get left out? So I'll be interested to know what you guys think in the comments. You'll like this video because uh, you won't get to see my face for, for most of it. So first, let's look at average attendance of games. To me, this really gets to like, what is the support of your fan base? Um, what, what, is, what is your kind of core base look like? No surprise here if we're just looking at the ACC. Clemson, I, I hate that Notre Dame, Notre Dame is um, included in this. Notre Dame is not going to join a conference till they absolutely have to. But no surprise that Clemson and Florida State are the most well attended. Um, and then it really shouldn't be a surprise. It kind of was Virginia Tech. Um, the next, once you get into the next group of schools with you know about 65,000, then NC State. Pitt's a little bit of surprise at the top of the middle of the road. They're actually more well attended than UNC. Does not surprise me. Miami's at the middle of the pack there. Miami's had trouble with attendance at their home games for whatever reason, um, for probably a decade now. Um, so there, they you know, then you go into like Louisville. Syracuse is kind of a surprise. Syracuse more well attended than teams like Virginia, Cal. Then you get into Georgia Tech. You know, Georgia Tech's kind of at uh, the middle or the top of the bottom 25% of attendance in the ACC. Um, then you get Boston College, Wake, Stanford, SMU, and Duke only averaging about 25,000. Uh, I don't even know how, how much their stadium holds. Now, 
it was a little bit surprising to me because it's going to be a little bit uh, kind of inverted when we look at viewership, We're talking about TV viewership, TV market. Um, Big 12 schools are very, very well attended. BYU um, would be more well attended than, every, you know, th- they'd be in the top of the ACC. And on average, the Big 12, as far as home game attendance, very well attended. Now, how does that stack up? Um, to like the SEC and the big. Well, SEC, no surprise, most well attended. The outlier being um, Vanderbilt, and there's even some rumblings. Now, this take all this with a grain of salt of the SEC possibly forcing Vanderbilt out to make rooms for other teams that they would want and giving Vandy, you know, kind of a, <laughs> a severance package to leave the SEC. Um, Big 12 not as well attended. Um, in fact, that's probably their, their, kind of a, a bigger drawback. But, you know, if you're a team like Georgia Tech, Boston College, you look like you're not even coming close to the attendance of SEC schools. And, you know, we're looking at what are you adding to the conference? Why would they want you? Um, you would be bottom of the middle of the pack in the Big 12. So let's move on. Let's look at the next thing. Um, national... Uh, crowd size, this this is really uh, the same thing. The last slide I didn't mention was for 2022. This is for the 2023 season. By the way, all but one of these slides are from TJ Altimore. Definitely go subscribe to him on Twitter or go follow him on Twitter, X, whatever the hell it's called. Um, does great statistical analysis of a lot of this. Uh, you can see his uh, Twitter handle there at the top right. Um, these are all his slides, all credit to him. Like I said, again, go check him out. Um, but really more of the same, um, in, you know, in the 2023 season. Now let's look at TV viewership, all right? And I couldn't get really good numbers on just aggregates or, or good averages. This is um, for the 2016 to 2023 season. Uh, excuse me. A number of regular season games drawing over 4 million TV viewers. So I, I felt like this was a good look because you have so many years in there of what your TV viewership is. Now, again, no surprise, Clemson. This doesn't include uh, Florida State, I think. No, they've got Florida State on there. So Florida State and Clemson at the top. Clemson at the top with 18. Florida State with 15. Then Miami with six. Um and then a little bit of a surprise, Georgia Tech, Louisville, Pitt, Virginia Tech, all with three. It surprises me that Georgia Tech um, was uh, kind of top of the middle of the pack as far as having 4 million TV viewers or more. Now, a caveat to that, you know, when you look at statistics, you always kind of have to uh, infer bias or um, make sense of it. I don't know how many of those games <laughs> include, like, I'm sure one's like Florida State, one's Clemson, uh, one's probably Miami. Uh, in fact, that might be the three that are in there. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe a, a, an out-of-conference game for Tech. Uh, but then you get Duke, Syracuse, NC State with two, Boston College, North Carolina, Stanford with one, and then California, SMU, Virginia, and Wake with zero. Now, for all the people that just think, well, Tech should be an automatic for the big, or, you know, if you're – a Stanford or a Wake or whatever that because I and I've seen a lot of Stanford fans or posts that are like, oh well, we got all these Olympic athletes. Look at our total athletic de- department national titles. I have like 137. Yeah, but look how this compares to the SEC in the Big Ten. Everyone except for Florida State and Clemson are at the bottom of this statistic for those for the power two. Again, what are you adding? All right. Um, so if you know, Georgia tech, you go to the big look, Maryland, Minnesota, Indiana, Washington, they're all better in this. And look, because they're playing teams that have, you know, you look at Ohio state with 49, Alabama with 54, because you're playing those teams, that's going to draw up your viewership. That's something else to consider here. <sighs> All right, 
So let's look at average viewers of games between schools in conference groupings. Again, this is from the 2016 to 2023. This is going to kind of help us uh, with like somewhat how the ACC stacks up to the Big 12. Um, the ACC, the majority of ACC teams are just more well, they have a bigger viewership. All right, so Big 12 is more well attended. Maybe they have a more passionate fan base, but as far as national viewership, the ACC tends to do better. Again, Clemson number one. Uh, I feel like Florida State might be left off this list. Um, they are. So this list is um, on the right, you know, excluding the Big Ten, SEC, Notre Dame, Florida State, and then you know they're all in their own on the left. So Clemson number one, obviously, then Miami. Louisville has surprised me. I didn't realize how well uh, viewed Louisville was in that Kentucky market. Uh, they seem to have a very attractive, you know, TV viewership market. Then you go Pitt, NC State, Colorado um, is surprising. I don't know if if what happened since you know the Dion effect has blown this up, but look, it doesn't really matter what happened before Dion. We're looking at now uh, into the future. Uh, then you get into Virginia Tech. Syracuse is a surprise. Syracuse is um, fairly well viewed for a team that I've never really met a fan of theirs. I've met one. I actually worked with one uh, Syracuse fan. North Carolina um, kind of surprises me in the middle of, of the ACC top tier pack, uh, then Virginia. And then you run into Georgia Tech, um, kind of middle of the pack, Georgia Tech, Boston College. When you're just looking at um, – you know, kind of in conference games. Uh, the only teams that really fall below this are, uh, you know, for the ACC: Stanford, Cal, Duke, SMU. SMU dead last, dead last uh, in in total viewership, really nationally. And look, this is why teams like Clemson, teams like Florida State, are so pissed because when you look at what the ACC's response is, they've added, you know. Teams that no one's really watching, all you know, Stanford, SMU, and um, Cal, all not very well viewed when you when you compare them nationally. And then you have Cal horribly indebted, right? So <clears throat> it is what it is. But I, this Tech actually performs a little bit better in TV viewership than I thought. So to give credit to some of those people that are saying, "Hey, you know, don't be so hard on Tech." As far as the ACC, they're in the middle of the pack. But again, you have to look at what you're adding. So Tech at 1.41 million, that puts you uh, third from from the last when you when you compare them to the big SEC, Notre Dame, and and, and Florida State. So you're not really adding anything to the conference from TV market uh, when that's really aside from academics, the most attractive thing about tech, right? So yeah, you have to keep all of that in mind. Now, uh, this is kind of the same, um, but it, it's just a little cleaner tech uh, right in the middle of the pack. It, this is calculated a little different, again, from the 26 and 2023 season. Um, this is for major network games. Average viewers, av average viewers, sorry, major network games when not playing the Big Ten, SEC, Florida State, or Notre Dame. Uh, Georgia Tech actually doing slightly better than Miami in that, so um, and slightly worse in North Carolina. Uh, obviously, Clemson, Florida State are going to be at the top. Louisville, Virginia Tech, Syracuse again surprising. Syracuse even on major networks, uh, fairly well viewed. There must be. Um, a decent college football viewership up in that northeast part of the country. You know, I kind of look at that when you're looking at Boston College, Syracuse. There's a really more NFL uh, heartlands, not as much college football. But again, outperforming tech. SMU again last. SMU, Cal Stanford. I mean, look at that. The teams that they viewed, what are they really contributing? Stanford, Cal, SMU, all bottom of the barrel as far as major network viewership. And that is what they are looking at when you're looking at conference realignment. Again, what are you adding? Now, how did we get here? So let's start looking at revenue. 
the the big reason that all of this is happening, and again, we can be mad and, and resigned to self-pity over it, there is a massive revenue gap between the Big Ten and the SEC. And here's the important thing. For, for the tech fans, you know, there was a lot of tech fans that didn't like the Hyundai deal, and they wanted to stand on tradition and all oh, this, you know, Grant Field, we don't need to change that, we're selling out. To all those people that don't want to enact change, I want you to look at the revenue difference between the group of five and the ACC. Because it's about $100 million. $100 million. So if you're going to stand on tradition, if you're not going to do everything you can to be as attractive as possible in this period and you get put you get relegated to this group of 5 you will never be competitive in football it's over you're never going to overcome a 100 million dollar revenue gap and that's just between looking at the group of 5 and like the 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 ACC and what looks like 2017 2018 it's more i mean when you look at the SEC here SEC and big it, you know you're looking at 140 million dollar revenue gap. Again, you're never going to overcome that. Uh, now, there is a note um, It says COVID impacted fiscal years are excluded due to financially distorting peculiarities. So again, take some of this with a grain of salt. It's not getting any better though, folks. The new college football um, revenue has just come out and this is going to widen this gap. All right. I hate that Notre Dame gets keeps getting tagged in with the ACC here. They need to really crap or get off the pot uh, and just join a conference. But they can stand on their tradition because they have the viewership. They have the media market. They have the revenue and the academics. They have all of that on their own. And I don't want I, you know, I hate saying anything great about Notre Dame, but that's why they're able to stand on their tradition. If you're tech or some of these other schools that are that are on the bubble of being relegated. You, you're not afforded the opportunity to do that. You're going to have to compromise on some things. But the SEC and Big making, you know, about twice as much in revenue from the college football playoffs. And again, look at the group. Look at the group of five. You're not going to overcome that if you don't do something now. Let's get into revenue. And this is where you, you need to pay attention. Georgia Tech, I, they, I think football revenue might be last here, dead last. Second to last in just total athletic department revenue. Only, and, and, and Wake is the only team that's worst. All right, so going from the top, if you include Notre Dame, they're at the top of this thing. Duke, interestingly enough, um, I imagine that their basketball really helps with that. Uh, then Florida State, Clemson, Miami. Then you start getting into the middle of, middle of the pack with Virginia, Louisville, North Carolina, Pitt, NC State, Syracuse, Virginia Tech, Boston College, and then Georgia Tech and uh, Wake Forest at, at at the bottom. So this doesn't is it's, it's not good. If if it really if you're Syracuse down, you're you're in a tight spot, or really NC State down. Um, but let's look at the whole story. Maybe you're not spending as much or, or you know, maybe, maybe there's more to it. Let's look at total debt. Uh, now, this is a national thing, and um, this can be a little bit deceiving, too. You see teams like Alabama, Ohio State, you know, Washington, LSU's on here. They, yes, they've incurred a lot of debt to upgrade facilities and, and, you know, do things like that, but they're not in a financially, you know, stripped position, right? They're just sitting on debt to pay to later. They've got the money though. They've got the revenue. They've got the donor backing. They got all that. But you look at Georgia Tech on here, Georgia Tech. Let's see what year is this? This is from fiscal year 2022, 278 million in debt. From what I can tell, it's more like 175 now. They're sitting on money for the Ed Center of about 175 million. But that's two things you don't want to have in the same sentence. We're 
one of the most indebted teams in the country, and we have the second smallest athletic revenue, and from what I can tell, the smallest football revenue. It's not a good combination. Then we, the ACC just added Cal, who's the most indebted team. They're not on that revenue slide I showed. That's from a, a, a football, a Clemson football site. It's the only thing on here not from TJ Altimore that I just showed you. I imagine Cal is in an equally rough revenue situation, though. So let's look at margin. Uh, now, you can read what Tony has here. Again, this doesn't tell the whole story. You can't look at an athletic department like a business. They're not necessarily here to just churn out money. Uh, there's a lot more to that. But <laughs> again, Cal with the highest negative margin of $25 million a year. Tech kind of in the middle of the pack with that, uh, minus 10. Clemson and Louisville, one of the few that are actually um, profitable. Jeez, look at Rutgers there, negative 52 million. And they're in the big. Um, but that's a nasty one, two, three punch. Georgia Tech, one of the most indebted teams in the country. They're running on, you know, minus 10 million a year on their budget. And they have one of the smallest revenues in the conference. And I have to say it again, you have to look at why does the Big Ten want you? What you know, you, you've got to somehow sell tech in in light of this tech's in, in a horrible financial spot. <clears throat> All right, let's this is a good segue into some academics. Um, this is athletic department budget as a percent of research spending. And and this kind of could give you an idea and to buy into your football program. Um, so how do you interpret this? SMU, for instance, 189%. What does that mean? They spend about, <laughs> kind of funny, twice as much on athletics as they do academics, or in this case, research. I'm going to kind of use those synonymously, even though that's a l slightly dishonest, um, but I'm going to go with it, whatever. Uh, Boston College kind of surprising. They spend more on their athletics than they do academics. I kind of feel like a good sweet spot to be in here is where Miami is at 40%. And then you look at tech. You look at 8.2%. Um, so basically tech is spending 10% as much on athletics as they do research or I'm calling it academics. You know, I think you got to find a way to, to, to get that closer to, to, you know, 30%, you know, at least where like Wake is. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Let's roll into academics. Um, and this might come to a shock of some tech fans. You know, I kind of thought tech was was a little bit better in this. But the thing with tech is it's kind of a special case. They're top tier engineering. We'll look at that later. Tech and UVA, kind of top of the middle of the pack academics in the SEC. Then you run up to Notre Dame. UNC, if you didn't know, as much trash as we talk about them, has a great um, – Great academics. Um, all these schools are, what is it, AAC. They have that researching tag that the Big Ten <clears throat> doesn't necessarily require. It's kind of an unwritten rule. Nebraska had it when they entered the Big and has since lost it. And as you can see, they're at the bottom of the Big Ten. Um, but look, this is this is what you probably sell if you're a team like Tech. You know, they're uh, probably top of the middle of the pack big academically. Um you know, I was talking with Papa Rec. I was like, you know, I don't know what Louisville's uh, academics are. I know their TV viewership seems to be really good. Their attendance seems to be pretty good. Uh, evidently, they're an absolutely bottom of the barrel <laughs> academic school. Uh, so just running from bottom to top, you got Louisville, Clemson, SMU, Syracuse. Clemson, how are you letting SMU do better than you academically? Come on now. Uh, then you got Florida State, NC State, Wake, Virginia Tech, Boston College, Miami, Pitt, Georgia Tech, UVA, Notre Dame, UNC, Cal Duke, Stanford. Um, and just uh, for the Tech fans out there, um, you know, look, when I said Tech is more akin to MIT academically than a lot of other schools, I, you know, I meant that. Stanford, Cal, Purdue, they all have top tier, and you can see it here, better than tech, engineering schools, but they still have like English programs. They still have education programs. 
Tech is more like MIT and then like MIT doesn't have that. There isn't an education program at tech. There isn't, um, you know, some of these more, I don't, they don't have a liberal arts program, right? So I think in light of all this, we've seen our financial situation. We, we, we've seen what we're up against. I think one thing tech could really do to help, and I think they need to do it yesterday, is you need to start applying to have an education program to help with recruiting, to get big name recruits on your campus. And look, it doesn't have to be a cupcake degree, but most college athletes want to get into coaching after they're done playing, and you need an education degree for that. <clears throat> All right. So. That was a lot. Thanks for sticking with me through that. Now let's look at who are like my first in, second, third, you know, who's likely to make the power two, who's not, who who can really only hope for the Big 12, who gets left out. First in, I think, is no surprise. Obviously, FSU and Clemson, what, whatever order you want to put them in. Um, I think FSU and Clemson really more line up with SEC. I don't – obviously, they don't care which of the two they get in, but – I think they more line up with the SEC. Now, if one of them goes the SEC, <clears throat> Big Ten is going to pull to get the other one. They're not going to want both of the premier ACC brands going to the same conference. You know, I've mentioned we're really in an arms race, like a cold war between the Big Ten and SEC. I think they both line up more with the SEC as far as alumni, <clears throat> as far as academics and a lot of other things. Then I think you've got UNC and Miami. I think these four teams – um, you know, 100% likely FSU and Clemson getting the two and near, I mean, 95% likely UNC and Miami getting to one of the two, especially once um, the thing starts to implode. Now, I think both UNC and Miami line up far better uh, with the Big Ten. They're both got, Miami just got their, <laughs> is it AAC? I, I, I should have looked that up before the video. They've got their little academic, uh, you know, uh, elite certification. I think more than likely you'd see like FSU, UNC go to the SEC and then Clemson and Miami go to the, go to the big though. They're, they're going to try and split those once, once all of this starts to unravel. <clears throat> and look, those, when you look at it, they're not necessarily the most viewed or the best financial or except for Florida State and Clemson, but on average, they're at the top of the conference when you put all of those things together. Then I think you've got Virginia, Virginia Tech, and like NC State. And I could be kind of wrong on this. Like I didn't run an Excel sheet and just average all these things out. I could have spit out like a money ball saber metrics uh, metric on them. Just from kind of what you hear and what I've seen, that Virginia market is untapped by the big or the SEC. They're going to want to get one or both of those teams in and then it's probably going to roll down Tobacco Road. So these are teams I think that <clears throat> are 50, 60 percent likely to find a landing spot in the Power Two. Um, none of their financials are horrible. They're all fairly well viewed. In fact, UVA, UVA, I think is the first in of the second group. Then I think it goes Virginia Tech, NC State in that order. And this might be my bias showing. These are teams I think that are 25 to 30% likely to make the power two. And their best bet is probably the big 12. I, or I think it's more, most likely that they will make the big 12. You know, Louisville has a really good TV market. They're really well viewed. Um, their financials are, are, are good. Uh, academics are not. I think... I think, though, they'd be the first of this group taken just because of the TV viewership and really pit Georgia Tech in whatever order. I think Georgia Tech's – where my biases might be shown is Georgia Tech's financials are awful. However, the big is not in the Atlanta market. Um, they are kind of middle-of-the-pack viewership, and I think maybe Georgia Tech could say, hey, you put us on a Big 12 schedule – and we're going to be middle of the pack viewership with you. You let us get, um, you know, <clears throat> the average payout you get and what we can do with that money. We can, that's going to immediately improve our financial situation when we start moving up. Um, Louisville, I, obviously, I think would fit the SEC better. Pitt, Georgia Tech fit the, fit the big better. 
Um, I will say I think one of those schools, at least one of those, will will make uh, the power two though. Now we're we, you know we're we're starting. I, I think these are teams that have no shot at the power two. I think these are teams that now are 50-50 shot of making the the Big Twelve. You know, Duke has really good revenue. Um, so financially they're in a pretty stable situation. Their viewership is 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 not good though. Their <clears throat> you know, attendance is awful. Um, you would really be pulling them in for basketball. They just lost, you know, the best coach they probably had since Steve Spurrier went to Texas A and M. Their football is gonna be in 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 turmoil for two or three years now. Maybe Manny Diaz, you know, learn some things at Miami, learn some things at Penn, and he can come at Penn State and can come in and, and turn things. But I think they're in for a rough ride for the next two years. Syracuse surprised me with their viewership. I just – I don't know. I, I don't feel like I've really met many Syracuse fans. I don't feel like they have a, a great core following um, – the big is already in the Northeast. I don't know that the SEC really wants to get that. They would rather pull Virginia, Virginia Tech, NC State before they ever got that far. Stanford, yeah, they're in California. Um, obviously, the big's already in California. Stanford, it just doesn't add much to either one of these. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I, I think they're. I just think their best bets the Big Twelve. I don't think the SEC needs to get into California right now um, when there's far better options on the table in the ACC. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now these next these last teams are teams that I think get relegated and left out. And I'm sure you know I, I might get some angry comments, especially with me putting Tech at <laughs> at the bottom of the third round, Boston College. I just don't see, I, I, you know, again, the, it's going to be the same thing. I really do think all these teams are ahead of them, or at least 90% of these teams are ahead of them. You know, I don't think they have a shot at making the power three. Cal, I mean, they have absolutely awful financials. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily well viewed for that California market. Again, the big's already in California, I don't, and the SEC is going to take – you know they're gonna they're gonna fill up before they get to even considering a team like Cal Wake. Um, I really like Wake. <laughs> you know I like Wake Forest. I think Dave Clawson's a great coach. Um, but for all the same reasons, I think they get left out. Now, if you're a Wake fan, you're probably saying you need to switch Wake and Georgia Tech on here. The thing with Wake is. I think it's unfortunate that you're in Tobacco Road. Tech at least has this, you know, the Big Ten is not in the Georgia market. You know, Wake is going to be behind the trough of Virginia, Virginia Tech, and NC State. Uh, so, and possibly even Duke. I know Wake's basketball is good. Um, but SMU, I mean, SMU just took a step into being the Power Five for the first time. And the Big 12 just has – I don't think they have a need for it. Maybe the Big 12 but was the Big 12. Yeah, they're already in the Texas market anyways. So I don't think they would add anything. Now, if you're a Tech fan, you've got a horrible <laughs> double whammy of your basketball is in probably the worst spot it's been in some, some time now, right? We fired Pastner. Stoudemire seems to be turning things. You're you're recovering in football from the worst stint you've ever been in. It's just unfortunate for Tech. We'll see how all this plays out. Let me know what you guys think. Um, did I misplace your team here? Am I wrong? What did you think about um, some of these statistics? Did any of it surprise you? Let me know in the comments. Y'all have a good one.